What's going on, guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, bringing you the CWL Premier Week 3 League Recap. And what an incredible week it was. A lot of surprises, some more upsets. We'll go ahead and uh, show you guys the matchups uh, that were highlighted. Uh, all the attacks, all that good stuff. But before we get into that, I want to break down the standings. Uh, a quick disclaimer that I want to get out to you guys uh, before we do so is uh, a little different from Season 2. Here in Season 3, there are no conferences. It's just eight divisions uh, that make up Season 3. So neither of these divisions are grouped in any particular order. Uh, so definitely want to get that information out to you guys. Uh, starting off at the top. I'm uh, going to jump right into this. Uh, in the Dragon Division, tied in first place, we have Gunma Samurai and Grumpy Old Men, uh, both at 2-1. Grumpy Old Men did uh, gain a little bit of ground. They won this weekend. Gunma Samurai lost, so now they're both fighting for that first place spot. Uh, we have Reddit Viper sitting in third place at 1-2. Uh, and they also lost uh, here in week three. And Vlar Mugulis is rounding off uh, the Dragon Division in the bottom at 0-3, still looking for their first victory uh, here in Season 3. In the P.E.K.K.A. Division, where it is very close between these three clans, we have North Awakens, Dragon Rejects, and Varhai Seleke all at 2-1. And, and we have Kornfeld in, in fourth place, uh, but not, not far uh, from the top, uh, they're, they are at one and two. Uh, in the baby dragon division, uh, we have Swarm Synergy all alone in first place, sitting at two and one. We have Gortoborg's Krieger in second place, despite having a losing record. Uh, they are in second place at one and two. And uh, in the bottom, we have BD Unbeatables and Assassin's Core uh, at 0 and 3. Both of these clans still looking for their first victory, uh, where they will be hoping to get that victory uh, this coming weekend in week four. Now, in the minor division, we have Forbidden and One Hive Genesis, both in first place at 3-0. and uh, They are still undefeated coming into week four. And we have Dark Avengers and Nottingham. What a close division this is. Uh, Dark Avengers and Nottingham, both at 2-1. and one. Very, very competitive. It'll be very, very interesting to see these numbers, you guys, are going to change a lot uh, this coming weekend in week four because all these clans war each other. It's an interdivision uh, matchup weekend. Uh, so definitely be uh, looking forward to seeing a lot of these standings uh, flip around here in week four. All right, guys, next four divisions that we're going to be covering uh, here in this group, starting off at the top, where we have the Wallbreaker division, uh, where we have Emphatic Fury, Unius Exorcitus, and War Addicts, all tied for first place, sitting at two and one. Down at the bottom, rounding off the Wallbreaker division, we have FYSB sitting at one and two. In the Balloon Division, we have Dark Looter X and Bad Intentions, both tied for first place. Uh, both these clans are at 2-1. and one. And we have COC Hogwars in third place. They're sitting at 1-2, and two, who just picked up their first victory here in Week 3. And in fourth place, we have Axew Something at 0-3, still looking for their first victory here on the season. Uh, in the Wizard Division... We have Above and Beyond and TWSS also tied for first place. Uh, both of these clans are also sitting at 2-1. and one. In third place, we have CWC Brawlers. Uh, they are at 1-1. One and, one. and if you guys look down at the Healer Division uh, real quick, uh, they were scheduled to war King Jeffrey. There was a mix-up uh, where a lot of bases got locked due to the Shrink Trap. Uh, so as you see, King Jeffrey has only had two wars and CWC Brawlers have only done two wars. Uh, so they will be scheduling uh, their week three matchup later on in the season. Uh, also rounding off uh, the Wizard Division in fourth place, we have Meet the Kings also in search for their first victory. They are at 0-3. Okay, finishing off with the Healer Division, we have From Molten Lava and Gahazi Bomber 2, both tied for first place. Uh, each of these clans also sitting at 2-1. and one. And we have Art of War, who is in third place at 1-2. and two. And again, King Jeffrey uh, rounding off in fourth place of in the Healer Division, sitting at 0-2. Uh, quick interesting stat, you guys, there's only two clans uh, in Premier right now that are 3-0. and oh, 
and we have 17 clans that are sitting at two and one. Very, very competitive and very, very evenly matched for what we have seen so far here in season three. Now that we've covered the standings, let's go ahead and jump into all of the highlighted wars to check out some incredible attacks captured here in week three. All right, guys, first matchup that we're going to be taking a look at that we're highlighting here was a huge one. We have Dragon Rejects who took down Reddit Viper. The final of that war was 84 to 80. So we have DR getting a four star victory over Reddit Viper. Keep in mind, guys. Back in week two, Reddit Viper took down FYSB out of nowhere. Huge surprise. DR had something to say about that and won uh, with a, I mean, a four-star victory. Huge victory. Uh, real quick, breaking down the stats, Dragon Rejects, a huge improvement into prior weeks uh, leading up to week three. They had two 10v10 triples. Reddit Viper did not have any, and not, not only did Reddit Viper not have a 10v10 triple, they only had one 10v10 attempt. I thought that was very interesting, but if you look at Reddit Viper's 10v11 game, only going three for 17, so they had 17 tries, only cleared three out of the four Town Hall 11s. Uh, Reddit Viper also had two dip fails, uh, Dragon Rejects had one, and Dragon Rejects Still only managed to clear three out of the four uh, Town Hall 11s that Reddit Viper had up on the map. This is one of them right here. Uh, classic doing work uh, on this hit up right here. Uh, but Reddit Viper did have a lot more 10v10 attempts because they still went three for nine. Uh, so big, big improvement uh, again from the prior weeks. And congratulations to Dragon Rejects taking down Reddit Viper 84 to 80 was the final. Okay, next matchup uh, that we're going to be covering is Dark Avengers taking on uh, Gotoborg's Kriega. Another interesting matchup similar uh, to Reddit Viper who took down uh, FYSB in week two. Gortoborg's Krieger beat above and beyond, guys. However, that was not the case here in week three. Uh, we had Dark Avengers not only winning, but crushing Gortoborg's Krieger. The final 86 to 81, a five star victory. Uh, real quick, we'll go ahead and dive into the stats. Uh, Dark Avengers putting up three 10v10 triples. Uh, we've said it in the beginning of the season and even in the end of season two, Dark Avengers, we always we always knew they had that uh, Town Hall 10 talent uh, coming with their Town Hall 10 three stars. This war, uh, they lived up to that expectation, again, getting three 10v10 triples. Gortborg's Griega, uh, Kriega was not able to put up a 10v10 uh, in this war on DA basis. Uh, another stat to really to pay close attention to, as as you'll see, it's a theme throughout this recap, is the 10 v 11 game. Da hitting way above the league average, uh, clearing four uh, all four of Gordborg Trigas Town Hall 11s. But not only that, only doing it in seven tries. Uh, so they did go four for seven, and on their uh, 11 v 10 game, they went seven for seven. Uh, they did. Uh, go a hundred percent as did another interesting stat. Gortoborg's Krieger went six for six. Uh, they went six for six on their uh dips. The huge stat right here, guys, uh, that we have to pay close attention that Gortoborg's Krieger has to figure out what is going on. Is their 10 v 11 game by far the league low in week three, guys, going one for 16? Not sure what happened there. You know why they ha decided to choose so many hits to eat up so many hits on these 11s. Uh, again, not sure what happened there, but going one for 16, they cannot do that going forward, uh, especially if they want to put up more victories uh, in the future in, in the rest of the season. Again, going one for 16, not getting any, any 10 v 10 triples. That was the deciding factor. Uh, huge props to DA putting putting up 86 stars. Okay. Next matchup, uh, another big one, guys. Uh, we all predicted this one wrong in the prediction video uh, for week three. COC Hogwarts taking down FYSB, the final 83 to 82. And 
at the end of the day, neither neither clans really had super impressive stats. Uh, we'll go ahead and go through them. Uh, CLC Hogwarts going uh, one for twelve on their ten v tens, so they still managed to get a ten v ten triple. Uh, a stat actually, I take back what I said. Uh, there are a couple stats you want to pay close attention to. Uh, CLC Hogwarts, uh, similar to Dark Avengers. Cleared FYSB's 11s in seven tries, going four for seven. However, the dip fills, they, they went six for eight. Not the best, still not the worst, but they did still had two dip fills going six for eight. FYSB, guys, this was the other stat uh, when I spoke too soon. FYSB had three 10v10 triples this war. So the first question you're going to ask yourself, they had three 10v10s. How did they lose this war? How did they only put up 82 stars? They only went three for eight, three for eight on their dips. Again, not sure what is going on, what's in the water. And uh, FYSB, all they had to do was adjust a couple, you know, have two more successful uh, 11 v 10 dips and they would have won the war going three for eight. Uh, Got to figure that out. You cannot have five dip fails uh, in Premier. You're, you're just not going to win any wars. Uh, FYSB did clear. It took a few more. Uh, they took a few more tries than COC Hogwarts, uh, but FYSB did go four for twelve on their ten v eleven game, and you know, they they have got to improve. I, we all know that FYSB is a better clan than this. Just have to make some. I'm sure it's just a few minor adjustments, and they're going to start winning some of these wars. What you guys just watched on your screen, it seemed most fitting, uh, being COC Hogwarts getting a, a Town Hall 10 triple using Hogs, of course. So congratulations to them, and congratulations to COC Hogwarts proving all of us wrong uh, and getting uh, the win over FYSB again, 83 to 82 was the final next up uh this was one of the treats that i had uh for you guys um only a couple 11 v 11 triples uh in week three this right here is one of them from none other than swarm synergy who took on nottingham swarm synergy walking away with the victory the final to that war was 84 to 81 and swarm synergy put up some impressive stats this war guys so not only did they have the 11 v 11 triple that you're witnessing right now uh they also put up three 10 v 10 triples so it was definitely in their favor in this war uh 10 v 11 only went three for 11 though however of course they were able to clear uh, all the all the 11s uh with this triple right here uh so nothing too much to worry about and their 11 v10s, they did have one dip fail going six for seven. So definitely not the end of the world. Uh, you can have a dip fail and still win many of these wars. Uh, so again, congratulations to them. Nottingham still had some impressive stats. Uh, they're still getting 10 v10 triples. In this war, they had two. And they had two 10 v10s, but technically they hit it 50%. So that's two 10v10 triples and only and only four attempts. Uh, reason why they didn't have a lot of attempts is because they ate up a lot of their Town Hall 10 uh, attacks on their hit-ups, uh, going three for 13. So definitely below league average and still leaving one of Swarm Synergy's 11s up on the map. Uh, only one starred. Uh, and their dips, they went five for seven. Uh, so they had, again, a couple dip fails. So have to definitely have to improve on that. But more importantly, uh, the 10 v 11 game, we know they have the potential to get Town Hall 10 three stars, uh, but they have to execute those hit ups. You get those hit ups taken care of and a few less hits that allows your clan to have more 10 v 10 opportunities. Uh, so Nottingham still looking strong going into week uh, going into week four. Uh, and of course, congratulations to Swarm Synergy getting the victory, a three star victory, nevertheless winning 84 to 81. So congratulations to Swarm Synergy and picking up an 11 v 11 three star. Okay, next up we have Forbidden, who took on Assassin's Core. Uh, Forbidden grabbing the victory. 83 to 81 was the final. Assassin's Core still looking for their first victory uh, here in Season 3 in CWL Premier. Uh, Forbidden uh, still putting up those 10v10 guys. Uh, are, they're killing it uh, in the 10v10 game. Uh, they picked up two this war. Uh, 10v11, they ate up a lot of hits. Uh, they had two 10v10 triples, 
only seven attempts. Uh, so si uh, similar to Nottingham, uh, their 10 v 11 game, three for 13. So again, if they execute their hit-ups and get these doubles on these 11s taken care of, that will allow them more attempts uh, in the 10 v 10 uh, department. 11 v 10, they did have two dip fails this war, uh, going six for eight. So again, not the best, definitely not the worst, uh, but executing those two 10 v 10s was crucial uh, to getting this victory. Uh, covering Assassin's Core, uh, they did not have any 10 v 10s this war. However, they were able to double all of Forbidden's uh, Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. So congratulations to them. Uh, it still took them 14 attempts to get it done, but regardless, getting those doubles on the 11s is something that they can build off of uh, going into week four. However, what they have to improve on is their dip game, their 11v10 dip game. Uh, they had three dip fills this war, uh, so something they definitely have to improve on uh, going forward. And again, Forbidden getting the victory, 83-81, to 81, a two-star two victory. Uh, what you guys are watching was just a beautiful uh, Lalo here uh, by Yellow taking down uh, Chief. And this was one of the heaviest Town Hall 10s on the map. Uh, this was their number six. Uh, so huge attack. Right? Look at all those loons left. Even has a hound uh, unpopped. So very, very nice attack to yellow on that one. Okay, next up, moving on here. Uh, we have grumpy old men who took on Kornfeld uh, and a huge victory. I mean, winning 84 to 83 uh, we'll go ahead and show you guys exactly how this war broke down uh, as we watch this attack unfold on the screen. Beautiful dragon attack using uh, the clone bone by IU Jimmy. Uh, Grumpy Old Men, and this was their uh, one and only 10v10 um, of the war. So Grumpy Old Men did get one 10v10 triple. And they did go uh, 4 for 11 on their 10v11 uh, game. Uh, so, I mean, they, they were still able to clear all of the... Uh, all of Kornfeld's 11s with their Town Hall 10s, uh, but did not have that many opportunities, uh, 10v10 opportunities. Uh, they still ate up a lot, of, a, a lot of attacks trying to get it done, but were still able to get those doubles, which is absolutely crucial considering Kornfeld went 2 for 17 uh, in the 10v11 game. Uh, so something Kornfeld definitely has to improve on uh, going forward. Uh, going 2 for 17 is definitely not going to cut it. Uh, 11 v 10 uh, for Grumpy Old Men going 7 for 8, only having one dip fail. Kornfeld still had opportunities to win this war, guys. Uh, Kornfeld also had uh, one 10 v 10, and they went 8 for 8 on their dips, on their 11 v 10 dip game, uh, going 8 for 8, hitting at 100%. Uh, but again, uh, 2 for 17 cannot do it and they only and they had a 10v10 triple but in only three attempts so again just like similar to a lot of these clans we've already talked about uh they clean up uh their 10v11s that allows them more opportunities for 10v10s and again grumpy old man getting the one star victory uh but cornfeld was still able to pull out ahead uh but congratulations to grumpy old men for getting that victory Okay, next up, we're going to be covering uh, Varhai Seleke taking on Gunma Samurai. This was a huge surprise for many of us uh, with Gunma Samurai in uh, favor to win this war. Varhai Seleke was not having it, guys. So not only did they win, they won by five stars. The final, 85 to 80. Uh, Varhai Seleke getting one 10 v 10 triple. Uh, they were, they did manage to clear all of Gunma Samurai's Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s going 4 for 12. A huge stat right here, guys. Varhai Seleke going 8 for 8 on their dips, hitting at 100%. Uh, so again, congratulations to them for pulling off uh, the victory. Gunma Samurai went, uh, they did have one 10v10, but what was absolutely crazy is they had one 10v10 in only two attempts. So they went one for two uh, in their uh, Town Hall 10 uh, three-star attempts. Uh, I, where Gunma Samurai really struggled this war, guys, uh, was their 10v11 game. Again, uh, getting those doubles on the 11s, uh, going two for 13. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comment section below if, if, this, if the shrink trap had anything to do uh, with some of these struggles. Uh, more so... 
uh, more so in the 10 v uh, more more so in the 10 v 11 department. Uh, we've really seen it struggle more so this week than in any of the other weeks. Uh, Gunma Samurai uh, did have two dip fills, going four for six. Uh, a couple of those uh, Town Hall 11s, they went for 11 v 11 attempts because the Town Hall 10s were not able to put two stars on the map on each of our High Silakes Town Hall 11s. So that's why the only, I mean, going four for six and still uh, getting two dip fills cannot do it. Uh, so again, congratulations to our High Silake. Not only getting a victory, but getting a five-star victory under uh, over Gunma Samurai, uh, who just suffered their first loss. So Gunma Samurai has now moved to two and one uh, after this war. Uh, so best of luck to both clans going into week four. Uh, going into week four, and of course congratulations to uh, of our High Seleke, uh getting the victory. Okay, next up we have. From Molten Lava, who took on TWSS, uh, not many were in favor of From Molten Lava, uh, considering some of the numbers that uh, FML put up in the previous weeks, but they got the victory, a two-star victory nevertheless, winning 84-82 to over TWSS. Uh, we'll go ahead and break down the stats for you guys. Uh, FML picking up two 10v10s this war, uh, so a huge improvement. Uh, like er, well, like what was mentioned in the prediction video leading up to week three, uh, they have some of their uh, blood back into the clan. They had a couple guys that were gone on vacation who are now back in it, and we have already seen an improvement getting two 10v10s. Uh, last week did not get any, so big improvement there. Uh, their 10v or their 10v11 game, uh, they were able to clear all of TWSS's. Uh, TW, yeah, TWSS's Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. So also a big improvement uh, right there. And the uh, 11v10 games still have to work that out. Uh, they had two dip fills going six for eight. Again, not the best, but definitely not the worst either. Uh, so big props to FML for pulling out this victory. TWSS did not uh, get a 10v10 three-star. Uh, not sure what's going on. I know back in week one, they had three 10v10s and their Town Hall 11s were struggling on the dips. It seems like things have kind of flipped around. TWS, TWSS did not have a 10v10 three-star. However, they went perfect on their dips and they also went perfect on their dips back in week two. So they definitely have to figure out what is going, uh, what exactly is going on there. Seems the roles have kind of reversed a little bit. Uh, and they went three for 12 on their hit ups. Uh, so they did leave one of FML's Town Hall 11's um, only one start on the map. Again, going three for 12. Uh, but again, congratulations to FML for pulling off a huge victory, winning 84 to 82. Okay, next matchup, guys, that we're going to be covering this, this right here, DLX absolutely brought it in week three. I could not believe these stats as they were unfolding this war, uh, winning 87 to 80. So they had a seven star victory over war addicts guys. Uh, and this is why they had five 10 V 10 triples this war. Absolutely insane. So not only did they have five 10 V 10s, uh, as you guys are watching on your screen right now, they also had uh, an 11 v 11 triple as well. So their heavy hitters absolutely brought it this war. Congratulations to them. Uh, not only a victory, but a seven star victory uh, out of all the wars uh, in week three. They put up the most stars out of any of the other clans, uh, getting 87, clearing all but three of the 11s uh, of war addicts. Uh, on their hit ups, uh, they did go three for six. So they still hit it 50%. Obviously, uh, they cleared one of the 11s, uh, which is this one right here. And uh, they went five for six on their dip. So they still had one dip fill, uh, but still went five for six. So absolutely huge. Uh, war Addicts did not have a 10v10 triple this war. Um, and I know that they put up, I believe it was four 10v10s back in week one. Uh, so definitely have to figure out what happened between week one and week three. Obviously a huge difference uh, in stats there. They went three for 10 on their hit ups and they had three dip fails, uh, something that has been reoccurring uh, for war addicts. I know that 
Uh, they had dip fills back in week one as well. Uh, but because they had so many 10 v 10 three stars, they were still able to get the victory. Uh, so have to figure out what's going on there. But, you know, again, going five for eight uh, on their dips, you just ha have to figure out, have to nail it down uh, going forward. They're still a very, very strong clan and um, they're still going to go very far into the season. Uh, but just have to figure out a couple things uh, leading up to week four and in the bye week leading uh, right after that. Okay, next... Um, uh, matchup that we're going to be highlighting here is One Hive Genesis who took on BD Unbeatables. One Hive Genesis, after this victory, have now moved to 3 and 0 on the season. Uh, the final to this war was 84 to 80, 84 to 82. So a, a two star victory for OHG. Uh, a couple stats I want to pay close attention to is neither of these clans uh, had a 10 v 10 triple this war. However, OHG went four for eight uh, on their 10 v 11 game, and they went 100% on their dips. Absolutely huge going 100%. That only puts you in the driver's seat. Uh, so despite not having a 10 v 10 triple, still pulled off a two-star victory, uh, especially when your 11s are going 100%. It just adds that much more pressure to the other clan knowing that they have to execute uh, their dips. Uh, so huge victory for OHG. Uh, BD Unbeatables, uh, like I just said, uh, they did not have a 10v10 three star. Uh, they had a, quite a few attempts. They went, they were still able to clear all of OHG's uh, Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s, but it took them 15 tries in order to get it done, going four for 15. And on their 11v10 dips, they went six for eight. Uh, so again, not, not the worst stats, but far from the best stats, uh, BD Unbeatable still has to figure out um, why they are so, why they are unbeatable. Uh, I know that they are now 0-3 on the season, so definitely have a few things to figure out. They're still playing, at the end of the day, they're still playing uh, a good war, uh, but they're just constantly coming up short uh, to each of their matchups. So definitely have to figure out what exactly is going on. And they have to start executing uh, not only their dips, but getting the 10v11s done with a few less attacks to allow them more 10v10 attempts. Uh, we know they've had a couple 10v10s on the season, uh, but we're not able to get one against uh, one Hive Genesis bases. Uh, so again, congratulations to OHG pulling off the victory going 3-0 and on the season. All right, last matchup that we're going to be highlighting, you guys, uh, before we go into what's to come next week. Uh, we have uh, Unius Exercitus, who took on Bad Intentions, UE uh, getting the victory, a five-star victory. However, a five-star victory, uh, the final was 83-78. to so bad intentions definitely struggled to put stars on the map this war. Uh, UE, a huge stat right here. Uh, they had three 10v10s this war versus bad intentions were not able to get uh, a 10v10 uh, in this matchup. N now where UE really shined in this war, guys, uh, and where they hit above the way above the league average is their 10v11s going four for seven, an absolute huge stat. And you see, they went four for seven, and that allowed them that allowed them that many more attempts uh, for ten v ten three stars. Uh, and on their dip game, eleven v ten dips, they did go six for eight, so they had two dip fails. Again, not the best, still not the worst. Uh, could definitely be better. They could have easily put up eighty five stars uh, on the map. Oh, actually, they did spin a little heavier breakdown, so definitely could have put up eighty four stars uh, if if even only had only one dip. Uh, so something they still can improve on, but a uh, huge props uh, to their Town Hall 10s getting three uh, 10v10s this war. Bad intentions were not able to execute a 10v10, and where they really ate up all their attacks, guys, uh, two for 18 on the 10v11. So they had huge struggles against UE's Town Hall 11 bases, and they also had uh, two 10v. Uh, they had two dip fills on their 11v10 dips. So, uh, huge victory uh, to UE. Um, they now have moved to 2-1 uh, on the season. So, huge pops to them, getting winning 83-70. to 70. 
All right, guys. Well, that is going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the CWL Premier Week 3 League recap coverage. I know I keep saying I don't want these videos to get too long, so I won't list every single matchup that's going to be going down uh, this coming weekend. So go ahead and screenshot it if you'd like. And like I said in the start of the video, these are all interdivision matchups. So there's going to be some clans that are in fourth place right now that could find themselves in first place depending on the outcomes of some of these wars. Also, make sure you guys check out the prediction video that will be shortly following this video. So make sure you guys check that one out as well. And I wish all 32 clans the best of luck uh, this coming weekend. Uh, if you guys like the video, uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS, and I'll see you in the very next video.